Thank you. Uh, to give you a background, um, well, my name's James Glenn and I'm a board member and the chairperson of the Most Modern Action Group. And um, we formed this group with um, Linda Holt, who's also a councillor for the East Newk area, and she's a board member, and several residents across Logelli, Cowdenbeath and Upter Tool. We've been campaigning against Moss Morn through other groups, but we've never ever had a focused campaign against them. And, and um, 2017 is when actually we first formed, we held our first public meeting. And this was in response to a really significant and bad flaring event by ExxonMobil. The details of their process upset has still never ever been disclosed, and process upset can cover many things from a boiler explosion to a gas leak to just sort of some rusting pipes causing the equipment to be knocked out of a process. But during um, the 12, between the 12th of June 2017 to the 24th of June 2017, they flared continuously, 24-7. So residents did not get any respite for any of the impacts and we'll cover those impacts as we go on. So at the back of that, we held a first public meeting and then we were mandated by the public to actually seek some kind of political action, legal action, community action against the operators to get these issues addressed, these long overdue issues addressed. Because less, the plant's been operating since 1985 and the issues haven't changed since 1985. In fact, as the plants got older and deteriorated, the issues have got more worse they've worsened and become more pronounced. So most of I'm assuming everyone knows what Mossmorn is, but just quite briefly, Mossmorn is the collective name given to the petrochemical plant and the central Fife area, which has four fence line communities. These are communities that are immediately in the vicinity, which is Wagelli, Octortool, Lonferens and Cowden Beath. However, the impacts from the plant affects are much, much wider area than these fence line communities such as Blingray, Dunfermline, Kakadi. Now the Mossmoren plant is split into two. There's the shell operated Fife natural gas liquid plant which has been marked out with a purple border. They take the gas coming down the pipeline from the Brent Sea um, oil fields and then they process into different products and they pass on ethane to ExxonMobil, which again I've highlighted on the left side. Now, both plants pollute the air quality and they both have impacts, but the two plants at the ExxonMobil site, which I think their pollution is about four or five times the level of shell. They're also responsible for like 95 to 99% of the elevated flares which cause so much distress locally and then um, they just have a different company ethos on how they maintain their plant to shell which ends up with quite a problematic plant that's running. They seem to cut corners on their maintenance schedule to maximise their profit and then this results in um, poorer performance by the plant and bigger impacts on residents. I mean, just to say that the difference between Shell and Exxon is that Shell is basically Dutch and European, and Exxon is American, which is maximising profit, running it into the ground, being really aggressive to media, being really aggressive to communities, being pretty aggressive with politicians as well. Whereas Shell is much more softly, softly, and Shell also says they, you know, realize that transition is coming and they're going to have to change and all of that they're much more approachable and they've also they look after their plant better and they um interact much better with the communities well then the thing that they both plants have got in common is that they're coma sites this is the control of major accident hazard regulations basically because these both these plants then process quite toxic chemicals and volatile chemicals that can be dangerous if handled incorrectly. They therefore come under the supervision of the Health and Safety Executive that's controlled by Westminster and also the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency, which falls under the control of Hollywood. Um, one other thing to add about this is the Shell plant is a bunch of site. 
And it's given that name, some of you may remember that there was an oil storage plant down in England called Bunsfield. They exploded and it was the biggest peacetime explosion in the whole of Europe. Um, which had destroyed some of the local residents' buildings and things like that, and I don't know the other impacts. But because of how dangerous that area was, they then came up with the term a Bunsfield site. But if it's capable of exploding to that extent, which the shell site is. So to give an overview of the community issues, although we've defined some of them quite clearly, they're all interchangeable with each other. So certain impacts will fall under both noise pollution, air pollution and light pollution. But to quickly go through them, the noise pollution is, they're saying the daily noise for the plant operating. And at the moment they're decoking their system, which is causing a lot of vibration in the community and excessive noise. But in normal operations, there's always a background noise. During flaring events with the elevated flare, you have all that disturbed air causes quite a lot of noise and vibration. It sounds like a jet engine, really, really loud, and it's 24 7 propels to flare. There's no respite from it. I mean, we, we have video of people's glasses in their kitchen cupboards vibrating because of the roaring noise. It's as extreme as that when they've got the high flare on. Another aspect of the vibration that was mentioned there as well is the low frequency noise that comes off. And that can travel quite far, up to I think about 10 miles. So then people beyond the fence line communities are also getting impacted. And with the way sound waves work, one house may get extreme noise, but if the sound wave dips into the next house, the house next door might not get any noise at all. So it doesn't affect every household the same. There's, so there's that variable issue there as well in the communities. There's light pollution, which is so bright when they're flaring for the elevated flare. It's a flickering light. You can have all your lights off in your home and you can still read the book in the pitch black because the light's so bright coming off the flare and it's hard to keep this pulsating light out of your home. And that disturbs your sleep, migraines, headaches, causes anxiety, causes stress. We then have the air pollution. Now, NHS 5 for years have denied that there's any issue with air quality because they fall within CEPA's guidelines. Now, the, there's a higher cancer incidences in Central Fife and there's higher asthma rates in Central Fife and other air-related illnesses. These, in the 80s, these were dismissed because these were all mining communities, ex-mining communities, so it was seen as a people because they were still coming out of the mines at those times, so they were impacted by the mining industry. Once that passed, the, then the next issue that was, well, the next excuse was used was that we were all smokers. And then the third, the, the excuse to use now because smoking is less prevalent now because of sort of certain healthcare practices, and you can't continue to blame the mines, it's an issue of poverty. It's never ever the issue of like much more. And just to give an example, that Black Creek that you see coming out of the flares, these are different events, that's never ever tested live. So they don't know how much pollutants are coming out and they don't know what all the pollutants are because they did not test for it. And then by the time SEPA comes, usually that part of the flaring is over. And what they do rely on is data from ExxonMobil. So how they test how much pollutants they've released into the atmosphere is Exxon Motors, basically you do your own self-assessment tax return. Exxon goes, this is how much pollutants we've released. They give that data to SEPA and SEPA either agree with it or they disagree. And SEPA always agrees. There was once they were getting an audit and during that audit, Exxon Mobil then admitted, this was in 2012, that actually they'd underreported several million tonnes of carbon dioxide and it resulted in them getting a 2.4 million fine. So they've already shown in the past that they can't be trusted and Shell was the same, they had underreported their carbon emissions but they were only issued with them £40,000 fines. And again, the fines are so low that for some of these companies it's the cost of doing businesses just a running cost to take into consideration for other, for other 
issues. So the health impacts a wide range on for cancer issues, asthma, there's sleep disturbances, stress and anxiety when children and them um, adults during flaring events, people with sensory processing disorders, and um, people with Asperger's, autism, can find um, the sight of the the sight of the flare and also the noise can be quite an overload to their sensory perceptions. But there's also an everyday stress and anxiety when they're behaving in a normal operations. You can ignore them to a certain extent, you know they're there. But then when they do flare or any minor instances, you do, it brings that stress and anxiety straight back because we're all aware that that plant could explode if they've neglected it to that extent, and we have seen explosions at the plant. Luckily, they haven't been as serious as what potentially could happen. But we all know in the area that that potential is there. And parts of Lugelli and County Beef and Lampinans are within the predicted blast zone if for the worst case scenario. Plus, we've also seen the coma plan that Fife Council have produced together. And their biggest fear is a large toxic gas cloud forms and blows over the communities. And at that point, there's the immediate vicinity that we've been in the blast zone, but you've also got a cloud, a toxic cloud that can be drifting over communities away up these new, across the Edinburgh, just depending on what way the wind's blowing. And lastly on the community issues is political neglect. There was structures legally set up for the planning conditions that was um, to be a community liaison forum with community councils, councillors, Exxon Mobile and Shell. However, the community councils that served in this board that were supposedly representing residents' views and the councillors were accepting gifts from Exxon Mobile. And these were two things like the Edinburgh military tattoo, Six Nations rugby matches, slap up feasts at Balburn the Hotel. They weren't cheap gifts, these are gifts in sort of £800, £1,000 odds. So this gave people lost faith and these community councils and councillors, due to the gift taken, they felt that these people were taking brown envelopes, backhanders, and therefore weren't effectively representing the views. But at the same the time, residents. the community councils and the councillors were also not strongly expressing local people's views. I mean, they basically, I mean, it wasn't as straightforward as being bought, but you know, Exxon had got really friendly with them, treated them really well, and so they, um, made their criticism much milder, milder. It wasn't just that there was a loss of trust by the community, it's also that these political representatives didn't go in there and fight Exxon, because Exxon had become their buddies, you know, who they went out socialising with. So as part of our forum, as a Lugelli resident, I knew what the complaints were in Lugelli. County residents knew the complaints, Halbeath, Dunfermline, people knew what the complaints were, but they were managed. They never ever made sort of mainstream media. They never ever became talking issues in Holyrood or at Westminster. And they weren't researched by NHS Five, for instance. So one of the things we felt was important to do is we've done a social impact map and we made this available publicly online. Because it's all very well that Wagella residents knew the issues, but we had to make sure that people in Edinburgh, people in Glasgow, if they were interested, Knew for that she's raised and also to collect reasons. the data, the sheer volume of people who were experiencing this and complaining. So at the moment, we've got 363 public reports that we've put up on the website. There's another 52 still to be added to the website, and we have put some of the numbers here. One thing I'll say about the numbers is they're underreported. On the basis, we've had residents that submit that their two children and um, their wife or partner have all had sleep disturbances, but because this came from one household, we report it as just one issue for the whole household. Doesn't matter if we've got three kids, one kids, so we're under-reporting these numbers. But on the back of this um, the social impacts map, because it became so powerful, the press, specifically the BBC, started running with these stories and going to the residents, which then heralds the Scotland Herald, another sort of more national paper started that picking up. So it took the issues away from the local press and took it to a wider circle. Also with the, the amount of instances of flaring issues being so visible for Holyrood and Edinburgh residents, 
Edinburgh residents, I felt, end up supporting us because they thought, well, if it's bad for us here in Edinburgh, what's it like for those poor buggers <laughs> that's having to live with that daily? But to go back to the social impacts map, this forced NHS Fife to do a study. Now, their study was very, very weak. And it's weak because when residents have got issues, they can't go to the get an appointment at the doctors to report it. So there's a 10 week waiting time in Loch to get a GP appointment. And NHS Fife haven't set up any recording mechanisms that if there's a flare event and people are coming towards you, this is how you record it to see if it's attributable to the petrochemical plant. So what they've done is there was over 900 complaints made to SEPA during the Easter flaring episode. So NHS Fife studied them and just marked out anywhere that somebody mentioned a health complaint, they marked it down as a negative impact. But the thing is, people aren't phoning SEPA up with health complaints. They might mention a health complaint in passing, but they're phoning SEPA up about an environmental regulation breach. So the study was very, very weak. It was the first time NHS Fife has ever admitted that, yes, there could be serious physical and psychological impacts coming from the petrochemical plant. And then I'll just... All right. No, sorry, it's my turn now. Um, as a result, there was major flaring in Easter 2019 and people were incredibly upset about that. From It was flaring by Exxon. As a result of that, um, I got a colleague because I, I was banned from speaking about Moss Moran and Fife Council because I'm on the Moss Moran Action Group and I was deemed to have an interest. So I had to get a colleague to propose a motion that Fife Council wanted and would support um, a um, independent study into the full environmental health and social impacts of the plant because this basically we have got a lack of data all the time you know the the plant can say and the scottish government says and the regulators say oh well there's no proof that it has these impacts and this is all just anecdotal but they haven't looked for the impacts nobody has done a proper study to look at the full range of impacts not just from a single flaring event but over time because a lot of these impacts are cumulative so we want an independent study that does this so we put a motion to Fife Council. The Labour group, amazingly, came back with um, um, a counter motion that made our motion much, much stronger and padded it out in various ways. The SNP came back with their own motion, because it's an SNP Labour coalition at Fife Council, which was weaker, because basically they are there to, to bolster the position of the Scottish Government at Holyrood about, about Moss Moran. What happened was the most amazing five council meeting where Labour councillor after Labour councillor stood up. These are Labour councillors from the area talking about the awful impacts of Moss Moran very passionately. And the, the Labour motion was carried. So it was not just for um, an independent study. It was also going to seek compensation for um, communities who have to um, bear the brunt of this flaring, and it also wanted to open talks about transition because it's perfectly clear these, these um, plants can't go on forever um, and we need to start thinking about how we're going to wind them down, close them down and still look after the workers. And that was, although in, in many ways this was symbolic because you know Fife Council doesn't have the power to do these things on its own, it was an absolute step change u-turn because it was labor that had always um that had supported moss moran they had they had been ad, they had campaigned for for exxon and shell to come to fife because they thought it was going to bring loads of jobs because there were supposed to be lots of factories processing the products afterwards of, of moss moran these factories never materialized so the thousands of jobs never came but because of that labor had felt they should always support moss moran and suddenly that completely changed. So, so this, this was a huge thing. Fife Council, the administration, wrote to the Scottish Government, 
asking for the independent study. The Scottish Government said we can't do it because CEPA is conducting an investigation and it could compromise their investigation or any legal work. This is, this is a total excuse. But they have continued pressing for it. They've tried. They haven't been brilliant. They've, they've pressed a little bit for compensation. They held a community meeting. But there's a lot of ambivalence about taking any money within the communities from, from Osmoran. And nothing has happened on a talk, talks about a transition. But because this motion has been passed, it means the administration is legally committed to trying to implement it. And it gives us the scope and we've met with the leaders and we'll keep meeting with the leaders of Fife Council to push them to implement it. Um, the other thing that, that happened part, partly on the back of the Easter flaring, well it had already happened before the Easter flaring, was that there was a motion from Alex Rowley which um, for an independent investigation, which also resulted in um, a debate at Holyrood. Then there was another motion in June last year from Mark Ruskell for an independent investigation, which attracted cross-party support, you know, from all the parties, Conservative, uh, we had Willie Rennie sign it, obviously Labour, Greens, and even Annabel Ewing from the SNP, who is the local constituency MSP. Of course, this motion went nowhere, but nevertheless, it's an important symbolic marker and and this question of having a proper independent investigation to get the data is not going to go away um, the greens also started an email campaign which attracted thousands of signatures to the environment minister and we have done freedom of information on um, the um, um, correspondence between ministers at hollywood about uh, moss moran and it's been very clear that they have been rattled by, by the motions, by the email campaign, and especially also by Twitter. They pay enormous attention to what is said on Twitter. So they are very nervous about what is happening, and they, take, they, they basically use SEPA as a buffer, but they are watching and they are nervous. So we will continue to, to push on that front. Um, then we've also had support from Westminster in the form of Leslie Laird, who was the in the last session of the um, Westminster Parliament. She was the MP for Kakodi and Cowden Beef. And she, when she was first elected, because the Mosmoran stuff, they'd just been flaring, it's all blown up. She thought she'd deal with it by forming a working group. And she clearly thought that the working group would meet once or twice and then the problem would be fixed. Instead, what this working group did, because, because of her clout, she was able to get um, the, not just the operators around the table and SEPA and representatives of local communities and Mosmore and Action Group, but also HSE, which had never before come to any forum. And um, what happened was that actually she realised that the problems were much bigger and also that the operators were much more resistant to changing anything or explaining what was going on. So this working group continued, and one, one result was that the operators and SEPA realised that they had to improve their public communication. They couldn't just say every time there was flaring after a while, they'd say, oh, we've had a process upset. But a lot more was required to um, tell the communities, and, and especially SEPA, I think, felt they had to up their game, and, and they've done more monitoring as a result. So that's a good thing. But one of the things that happened because of HSOE being there was a meeting that I went to. We'd had um, whistleblowers who told us that when um, there was flaring last August and the Exxon plant shut down, that that was actually the result of boiler explosions. First one boiler exploded, then a second. This is, they have three boilers. Um, then the second of three boilers exploded and they had to, a week later, and they had to shut the plant down. And these were explosions that were really potentially catastrophic. I asked, we'd only heard that on the grapevine. Of course, Exxon had just said, oh, it's a process upset, nothing to worry about. I asked HSE and HSE said in front of everyone, these were catastrophic breakdowns and that the explosions had happened. Exxon nearly fell off their seat because this had now been stated in public and obviously we then went to the press with it and that has been you know really valuable. HSE is launched, they launched a small investigation after the first boiler explosion. After the second one a week later they launched a full-scale um, investigation which is still ongoing, it is still isn't complete but it is very very serious. So you know we unfortunately the Leslie Laird Working Group has now stopped because she lost her seat to Neil Hanvey. Neil Hanvey is SNP, isn't keen on a working group that he can't control. 
because he wants it simply to echo the Scottish government line. So we're not sure what's going to happen as a result of that. The other thing that's um, happened recently was um, Climate Camp Scotland. We heard that they were having one of their large meetings in Glasgow to choose a site. So we did go along in attendance and there was, I think there was four or five sites. And um, one of them was most modern and the other one, which is uh, similar to most modern and equally as important, was the Grangemouth camp. And um, through the process I'd done, which really it was quite an eye opener for us because we'd never been to meetings that was held in that way. They'd done them in quite differently and it was a very inclusive. No, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, it was really about building consensus and we'd never seen that before. And, um, and as a result, I mean, Moss Moran was ultimately, virtually everyone agreed that Moss Moran should be the site for Climate Camp Scotland this year. And a large part of that was because there were these communities that were already um, engaged and, and mobilised um, around Moss Moran. So we were very excited about that The because we've been working on our own really and the communities too were really excited about it. And we had councillors, other councillors apart from me saying they were going to go up to the site and, and live at the site and, and you know there was there was real excitement building here so it was obviously very disappointing that this has all been cancelled due to the pandemic but we very much hope that something will take place and Climate Camp Scotland have also, you know, they're also looking at doing, as, as the lockdown is lifted, a few smaller actions, maybe one or two focused on Moss Moran, and we'd be very keen in supporting that. Yeah. We also know that both the companies in, in Fife and the police in Fife were completely crapping themselves over a climate camp at Moss Moran. So that was, that was a rather fun prospect. And really that, so the last thing is to say is, as hopefully you know, that SEPA has finally concluded their investigation. Oh, yes. Took them over a year. They have moved... That was the investigation into the flaring last Easter. They've still got other investigations pending, so we're, we we're yeah. approaching the Scottish Government. To, they can no longer hide behind... Well, I think, I think they will still hide behind it, but they can't hide behind the Easter investigation. And that, I don't know, that was recently in the news that that super has now taken that to the procurator fiscal. And they are, and I'm sure that they have built an absolutely watertight case. So um, Exxon will be prosecuted, but it's not clear simply because the law is quite weak that they can really be hammered for a really significant fine that is going to make a difference. But at least they're going to be prosecuted. And, and on the back of that, we will be approaching an and we've already asked Fife Council again to approach the Scottish Government to commission the independent study. But the bad thing is because after the Easter flaring, there were the August boiler explosions and flaring. Then there was flaring in February um, and flaring again recently. So SEPA has two or three other investigations still ongoing. And that's the problem is that the investigations are always happening. And that's used as the excuse not to actually commission a proper inquiry into this. And I'd just like to say thank you for your time and thank you to Pete and Callum for... So, and I want to say one more thing, sorry, is that if you want Facebook, we, um, are, um, we have lots of residents who engage with, face, with the Mosmoran Action Group Facebook page and who always report what is going on. And it's almost like a sort of diary of what is happening at Mosmoran. So that's, that's the thing to visit. Um, Twitter is, is where the more political stuff, stuff happens, but that's also really useful. And obviously there's a backlog of information on the website.